Hi guys. So this is a little bit different than what I normally do. Normally we'd have a story time and I thank you guys so much for your patience this week and I'm so grateful to all the guests that I have had on that have allowed me to do interviews because this week I have been a little bit under the weather. I've been struggling with a low grade fever and some nasal congestion. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Now I did post something on the community board about having this low grade fever I've been dealing with to again thank you guys for your patience with other videos that are normally out on this channel during the week. And I noticed that a lot of you guys have said that you've been struggling with some of this as well this these last couple of months. And so I thought I would bring up something that actually Janine and I spoke about after we were finished filming on Tuesday. That video with Janine aired on Wednesday. Once we finished filming, I was telling Janine that I had been kind of battling with this like low grade fever and some congestion. And I, I mentioned that it, I wasn't worried about it because this seemed to be pretty spiritual. And I wanted to kind of share that with you guys because again, some of you have posted that you have been dealing with this as well. When I first started going to India and studying traditional yoga, I, I dealt with the same thing. I would get these like low grade fevers and I learned something. I learned that things like little viruses and, and fevers, according to certain philosophies, aren't necessarily a bad thing. Here in the West, we, we push away, we try to like always be the best and we think anything that happens that's not the best is is bad and that's not the case your body is constantly shifting and your body is your mind field if you joined us on Aquarius rising this past Monday Chantel and I spoke about this the body is the mind field the DNA is the nature of your consciousness and so things you, you think in your brain or in your subconscious and your psyche tend to filter out through your body. And sometimes when we learn new things or we process new realities, the body has to detox the old thoughts, the old patterns. In fact, the idea of patterning is common within the physical body and within our consciousness. You see, just like our blood flows through our body through all these different veins, our energy also flows through our body in these different pathways that we call nadis. And sometimes these nadis get blocked by whatever reason, and that's when a lot of spiritual healing comes in and practices like yoga come in. And the body can shift and flow in a different way. And so I wanted to bring this up because if you are one of the people who, like myself, has been struggling with this like low-grade fever, I wanted to kind of give you this perspective that I believe for myself that what I'm going through is kind of like an upgrade, like a level up in, in some ways, that my body is having to detox old patterns out in order to make way for new consciousness and new patterns. I mean, think about it this way. When the body creates a fever, it's creating heat, right? Heat to burn something up. It's like when you make cookies. They tell us now not to eat cookie dough because of the raw eggs. I don't know about you, but I still, I still eat cookie dough sometimes. But when you take the cookie dough and you put it on the cookie sheet and you put it in the hot oven, it changes the structure of the cookie dough and turns it into an actual cookie. All the ingredients are the same. It's just that the heat changed it. And when we have fevers, that's what our body is doing. It's trying to change something. You know, my boyfriend's teacher in India, the story goes that he used to get excited when you got the fever. When you got the fever, it meant that something was working. Something was changing. The alchemy of what you were practicing had taken hold of you. So it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I noticed my fever right after I started working with Negative 48 and that group. I was learning so, so much from Negative 48 and I'm so entirely grateful to be a part of this experience that I was having to like restructure my thought. And I think that's what's happening as things are processing and restructuring. Now with that being said, obviously I'm not a doctor, so don't take this as the God's honest truth. This is just something for you to consider for yourself. If you are struggling with a low-grade fever, you might just be shifting in your consciousness. 
Now, with that being said, especially in a practice like yoga, when you do have a low-grade fever, we tell people not to practice but to rest because in the practice itself, you're getting hot and sweaty. You're inducing that heat of change. But when your body does it on its own in the form of a fever, you don't need to add any more heat on top of that. You just need to let, to let the body do what it wants to do or needs to do in order for the shift to take place. It's like a rebirth through fire. Anyway, so I've woke up this morning and my fever i felt pretty good and so i did my practice and then i went to the grocery store and i came back and i was going to shoot a story time for you guys but when i got back i felt warm again and, and lo and behold i my fever is back so i'm not going to shoot the story time that i was today because i want to do these stories justice i never want to just haphazardly put together a story for you all so that's why I'm kind of just doing this chit chat with you right now is because I want to save the stories for next week when I'm hopefully better and I can do justice with these stories because they're great stories and I can't wait to do them because I can't wait to hear your opinions on these stories because I do value y'all's insight as well. I also wanted to bring something else up that I can just talk to you guys about without really needing my notes, you know. So if you saw the episode with Janine that we did earlier this week, the last question I asked was what is the new earth going to look like? How, what is the theory behind us all moving together into this new consciousness? And if you missed that, that video, I'll put a link to it down below so you can go back and watch it. We know that certain people are not going to be coming with us into this like new age. And that's okay. And I kind of wanted to try to explain what I understand around this. We know that the laws of the cosmos, the laws of the divine, is the law of free will. You cannot force anybody to do something against their will. And if you do that, then you are breaking the laws of free will and that's not good for you. You know what I'm saying? Every single human being has to respect that. Every single entity has to respect the law of free will. We all have a choice to make. Now, if you combined the law of one with like the Bible, Christianity, this idea of this thousand years of peace, the age of Aquarius that's coming, and the law of one, we know that we're going from a third density planet to a fourth density planet. So the planet itself is also shifting, not just human beings that live on the planet, but the planet itself. Now just kind of Cliff Notes version of the law of one. Third density planets or places or beings are not polarized positive or negative. And third density planets, good and evil are balanced. And most of us that live on a third density planet live within the arena of the gray. We're both good and bad. The point of us living beings in this third density is to make a choice, to decide if we're gonna polarize positive or negative, to the light or to the darkness, to God or to Satan. Now in the law of one, they call polarizing positive it as service to others and polarizing negative as service to self. We've spoken about this in some lives before and I will link those down in the description box as well. To polarize positive, to be harvested into the positive, you have to be 51% service to others. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect because none of us are perfect. We all mess up from time to time, but you have to the majority of you has to have empathy, compassion, and being willing to serve other people. To polarize negative, you have to be 99% service to self. So it's actually harder to polarize negative than it is to polarize positive. And service to self, if you think about what this religious entity of the C-A-B-A-L does, the things that they do in their rituals, that's extreme service to self. And it totally takes away other people's free will if you think about what happens in those rituals. And so they are actually actively trying to polarize negative, to serve Lucifer, to serve Satan. Now, for the whole span of the earth, we've been in third density. The earth itself is third density. But as we know from like revelation of the Bible and from the law of one, that the earth, 
the ground we stand on is also going to be going into a new density, not just us, but the earth as well at this point in our timeline. The earth itself is destined to be a fourth density positive planet. And so for those of us who are on this journey and who are in the great awakening and have made a decision to wake up, to understand what's truly going on and to really stand and hold the line for the good of humanity, we are going to be basically ascending with the earth. So again, that means the thousand years of peace, the light bodies that is spoken about in the Bible, this all says the same thing basically. Because the earth is moving into fourth density, positive, third density beings cannot stay on a fourth density planet. They won't be able to because their frequency does not match the frequency of the new planet. So people, friends, families, strangers, we all have our own choices to make. And as sad as it is, some of the people we know have made the choice, whether again subconsciously or consciously, to continue on the path of third density. So when we talk about this, the cure, some people who've gotten this will move on to fourth density positive because they maybe decided before getting this that they had already were going to move up, but for some reason was co were coerced into this or, or whatever. But some people who have gotten this won't be able to come into fourth density because they need to stay in third density. They're still on that journey. And that's okay because we're all on our own journeys. And I think that's okay with God. It's okay with the cosmos, with the universe. And so this could be a good way to help those people transition to a new place, if that makes sense. I know this might sound a little sci-fi or kooky if you're new to this kind of stuff, but I'm just trying to explain it from that last question I asked Janine. Now, of course, we know that the C-A-B-A-L, those people, the 1%, um, who do these crazy rituals um, that involve really evil stuff. They also cannot be on a fourth uh, density positive planet. Now, from what I understand, they try to turn the planet into fourth density negative, but the planet was always destined to be fourth density positive. So that's why they're not going to win. It says it in the Bible. It says it in the law of one that no matter what they do, they're not going to be able to change the direction of the planet. They're going to have to go to a fourth density negative planet. That's why they have to leave. You know, so the people that are exiting stage left are going to be, again, those that have made the decision to go fourth density negative and have succeeded in that and those who haven't made the choice yet whether they're going to go negative or positive and they have to stay in third density until they make that choice until they're ready to be harvested into either positive or negative now i know from the law of one that sometimes when planets shift from third density to fourth density you don't people sometimes don't even really notice it it's not like this huge thing happens and colors change it's just your vibe every the vibrations just move up and things just shift naturally now i know from people who are big into the law of one that they say earth was one of the most hectic third density places to live on that a lot of the other third density planets are not as challenging as earth and so we might actually experience something that pushes us into that shift kind of sounds that way if you look at the Bible text and if you look at the Law of One text, we might actually see it happen. But then again, you know, there's also, you know, we already started transitioning on December 21st with the alignment of Saturn and Jupiter into the age of Aquarius. And of course, it takes a couple of years for things to totally transfer. But we have seen people leaving the Earth plane. You know, we've seen the crumble of the old guard, which is bound to happen. So we are seeing these shifts happen as we move into this new place of existence. You know, regardless of what happens, everything is okay and everything is in God's control. And we've already made these decisions. We've already decided where we're gonna go. And even if there is somebody in your life that is not going to be moving forward with us, just know that they already made that decision. That decision was already made by them, by their own free will. 
and that's okay you know sometimes people need to repeat grades a few times sometimes people need a little bit more time to understand in their soul what's happening and for those people, it doesn't mean they're not ever going to ascend. They're not ever going to come to that place. They just need more time. And that's what I think this is all about and why some people on The Good Guys are actually supporting this. Because they know that people like you and me, we found our sovereignty. Once you find your sovereignty, there's nothing anyone can say that's going to make you give that up if that makes sense, right? Like Mr. T knows that you and I are not going to go get this regardless of what he says to do because we have found our own sovereignty. And finding that sovereignty and being able to put healthy boundaries up is a positive action, okay? But he also knows there are people that have made this decision not to move forward with us. Whether they know it or not, again, it could be subconscious. And so therefore, by getting this, it might be easier for them to then transfer to their new realm, their new journey, their new school. I hope that makes sense. Again, that might seem a little out there for some people who are new to this stuff. In my journey, I've learned that the psychedelic stuff, the mystical stuff is actually more real than like the matrix stuff it seems it's all it's all about spirituality it's really is all about our spirit and so i just kind of wanted to to clarify that for today again this this is a very short video and i will get back to storytelling next week hopefully when i'm feeling better i'm gonna try to shoot tomorrow um i have tomorrow so i'm i'm filming this on thursday so this is thursday september 2nd this will air on tomorrow on friday September 3rd. Now, Tamara is coming on tomorrow. I'm going to be talking to her at 6 a.m. my time. Um, and depending on how long it takes me to edit that video and do all the bells and whistles for YouTube, it will either air tomorrow afternoon or Saturday morning. So either Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. Probably Saturday morning is when I'll probably get it out to you guys. And then hopefully starting next week. We'll get back to our Mystery Mondays and some of our stories. I've got two stories for you guys that take place around the New, the New Orleans area. One story I found while I was researching some stuff in New Orleans. The other story I had known about but was reminded of while I was researching for New Orleans. I won't say much more than that because I'll wait for Monday Mystery for you guys to see it too. And again... Both of these upcoming stories don't happen in New Orleans, but they're around the vicinity of New Orleans. And then we'll get back to our deep dive into certain people and characters in the city. For those that are living in New Orleans and you just had Ida come through, we are definitely thinking about you and we are definitely praying for you right now. If you guys saw my video with Janine, I did ask her and that was a black hat operation. I kind of felt like it was in my gut. They're, they are still around. I think a lot of people in our um, community, you know, the military back channel, this one, y'all can see that. Y'all see what that is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Number 16 plus one. That guy said that basically the white hats were in control. He didn't use the white hat, hat's name. He used another name, but I can't say that the P word anymore. That's considered, it's not a good word on YouTube, to, you've apparently. Um, anyway, I think a lot of people in the community think that means that there are no more black hats in this game, in this movie, uh, but that's not true. What I got from that is that the white hats basically just have the upper hand. Doesn't mean that we're not good, still going to see backlash from the Black Cats. This is very much an active WAR, and they do still have some power. We know it's going to be okay and that this is the end for them. But again, if you think about it from their perspective, they are fighting basically for their lives right now. And so they're going to try anything they can. It's like backing an animal up in the corner. You know, it's going to do whatever it can even if it doesn't make logical sense because it's in a panic mode. You know what I'm saying? So we are still going to see motion coming from that side of the game, that side of the, the movie. Um, and we just need to keep our fellow friends and family members and our fellow humans in our prayers as we move into this. 
according to Wano Saban and some other people, we're going to have one last gut punch coming. Um, and so I'm preparing for that. I'm sure you guys are all too until everything's over and done with. We know that we're getting towards the end though and the best is yet to come. So anyway, sorry that wasn't a typical video for, video for you guys, but I wanted to just communicate with you guys why there hasn't been any story times this week. I have definitely been feeling, feeling the fever this week. So um, hopefully by next week, everything will be back to normal though. And I hope for that you guys all that said that you were experiencing this too, feel better, know that it's probably just your upgrades <laughs> coming. So anyway, and those med beds are coming soon. So, <laughs> so that's good too. All right, guys, lots of love to each of you. Be looking out for tomorrow's video that should be posted at some, sometime soon. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.